this video, we examine how ongoing sanctions pushed Iran toward the development of an indigenous missile industry, a complex path that began with limitations, but led to capabilities that now play a role in regional military dynamics. We will explore technical details, the evolution process, and the consequences of this path. The goal of this analysis is to offer a realistic understanding of one of the most challenging military programs in the Middle East. As you know, heavy sanctions against Iran began in 1979 and gradually intensified. However, these pressures led Iran to choose self-reliance instead of dependency. One of the most significant outcomes of this path was the development of a domestic missile industry. Contrary to expectations, this industry not only survived, but made significant leaps forward. Unlike some countries that import missiles, Iran manufactures entire systems independently. From aerodynamic design to engines and fuel, everything is produced domestically. This self-sufficiency has rendered sanctions ineffective in halting development. Even some Western analysts have expressed surprise at Iran's pace of progress. The Fateh 110 missile is one of Iran's first advanced examples. It has a range of about 300 kilometers, high precision, and rapid deployment capability. Its main feature is the use of an inertial guidance system and an internal GPS. This marked the beginning of a path that later led to the creation of precision strike missiles. Subsequently, Iran moved toward the development of medium-range ballistic missiles. Missiles like Shahab, Qadr, and Sejil emerged from this phase. Some of these missiles reach up to 2,000 kilometers in range. They pose a potential threat to U.S. military bases in the region. Iranian missiles are not designed solely for long range. Their main focus has been on accuracy, maneuverability, and evasion of defense systems. For example, the Shafak missile, weighing just 13 kilograms, has high accuracy and can be mounted on drones. These features are critical for asymmetric warfare. Iran has also been highly active in developing ground-to-ground -ground missiles. Examples include the Zelzal and Dezful missiles. These missiles are highly mobile and can be launched from moving vehicles. This makes detecting and neutralizing them before launch extremely difficult. One of Iran's strengths is the transfer of missile technology to its allies. In Yemen, Hezbollah, in Syria, similar Iranian models have been used. This power transfer has altered the regional balance. Recent conflicts have demonstrated the effectiveness of these weapons. Israeli analysts have repeatedly warned about Iran's missile capabilities. Defense systems like Aero and Iron Dome were built to counter this threat. Yet some Iranian missiles have bypassed these defenses, especially those with multiple warheads or stealth capabilities. Iran has even moved toward developing hypersonic missiles. This technology is held by only a few countries. Iran's top military chief has stated that the program is advancing. If realized, it could fundamentally reshape the region's security structure. Artificial intelligence and advanced flight control are now part of missile design. Some models can even change trajectory mid-flight. These features reflect high-level technical expertise in design and testing. And contrary to media claims, these systems are not merely assembled. They're engineered. In recent military drills, Iran has actively deployed these missiles. Footage of Qadr and Dezful launches sent a clear message to regional adversaries. These exercises demonstrate not only operational readiness, but also a display of power. They prove that the systems are not just theoretical, they are functional. Another strength 
is Iran's hidden missile network across the country. Underground silos, covert bases, and mobile launchers are major components. This structure ensures second strike capability and retaliation, and it provides deterrence against preemptive attacks. Alongside large missiles, Iran also focuses on lighter weaponry. Small missiles launched from drones or speedboats are good examples. These tools are designed for irregular and coastal warfare. They are well suited for operations in straits and enclosed areas. Iran's missile capability has also played a key role in proxy wars. During attacks against ISIS and Deir Ezizor, Iranian missiles performed with high precision. These operations conveyed power and operational accuracy, and they strengthened trust in domestic systems. Another crucial aspect is the controlled and limited unveiling of missile capabilities. Iran always keeps part of its actual capacity hidden. This strategy causes uncertainty in enemy risk assessments. Ambiguity itself becomes a form of deterrence. Though sanctions have blocked equipment imports, they have boosted creativity. Iran has relied on reverse engineering, academic research, and battlefield experience. In many cases, critical parts have been replaced with local technologies. This has sustained the internal development cycle. Significant progress has also been made in solid and liquid fuels. Solid-fueled missiles are quicker to prepare. They are better suited for immediate wartime response. Iran has acquired the ability to produce both fuel types. Targeting systems have also seen major advancements. The use of domestic navigation, thermal optics, and LIDAR systems is increasing. These systems reduce dependence on foreign GPS, and they ensure precision in complex electronic environments. Western decision makers see Iran's missile power as a direct threat. Pentagon reports describe Iranian missiles as destabilizing factors, but from Iran's perspective, these are defensive and deterrent tools. This difference in viewpoint is a core reason for regional tensions. Iranian missiles are often integrated with multi-launch systems, for example, vehicle-mounted or underground launchers. These capabilities enable simultaneous and multi-directional attacks. They complicate enemy defense strategies. Air-launched missiles are also under development, such as the Kaknus and Ya Ali cruise missiles. These weapons allow for precision strikes deep into enemy territory. When combined with drones, they become tools for hybrid operations. Iran is moving towards smart integration of such systems. The media aspect of Iran's missile power is also carefully managed. Footage of exercises, test launches, and analyses are regularly published. This boosts domestic morale and sends a clear message to adversaries. Narrating war is part of waging it. Missile development is not just a technical matter. It's a national and strategic project. In Iran, missiles symbolize resistance to external pressure. This view has generated political and public support. And unlike other sectors, this program has never halted. In a region of fragile security and intense military competition, missiles hold great significance. For Iran, missiles are among the few real deterrent tools. With a relatively weak air force, Missiles serve as strategic complements. That's why continuous investment in this field persists. It must be said, Iran has built a genuine missile power based on domestic capabilities. Even without foreign assistance, it has reached a level that has drawn global attention. Sanctions didn't stop this path. They only made it more indigenous and complex. And that is what makes Iran's missile program more dangerous than ever.